So what are you doing? Yep, so I am checking our vehicle's logbook. And if you look at our logbook here, part of an effective maintenance program is having meticulous records. And so we keep records of absolutely everything that we do to the truck, to the Airstream, in these logbooks here. And looking at our logbook, as you can see, we keep milestones. Uh, when the love truck hit 10,000 miles, all of our fuel fill-ups, all of our maintenance. But we have now towed our RV uh, over 10,000 miles with the love truck. And if you checked out our video as to how we bought it, which we'll link up top here, um, you know, it's our first new tow vehicle in over 18 years. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about this 2018 Ford F-150 4x4 5.0 liter Coyote V8 and how she tows, what we liked about her, and maybe what we could do better with her. Yep, that sounds good. Okay, before we get into the details of the review, I thought I'd give some specifics on the truck. The trim level is the XLT, and it's of course living in Vermont, we had to get the 4x4. Exterior color is blue jeans, and the interior is a medium gray cloth because we prefer that over the leather. As I said before, the engine is the V8 Coyote, and that was a $1,995 upgrade. That's coupled to a 10-speed automatic transmission, and because of the lightweight of our trailer, we were able to get by with the 3.31 rear axle ratio, and we have the transmission oil cooler. You can see here the cost of some of the aftermarket upgrades that we did, which I'll be covering in the review. The tow capacity, as stated, is 9,000 pounds, but much more importantly is the tow capacity actual, which is after we've had the truck loaded up for a three-month trip. Similarly, with the Airstream loaded up for three months, it came in at 4,660 pounds, which is well within our capacities. How do I know this? Because we had all of our rig weighed at a CAT scale, which I highly recommend you do. Okay, the number one thing that I love about our tow vehicle is these extendable tow mirrors. Now, if you saw the picture from when we first bought the vehicle, you'll notice that the F-150 didn't come with the extendable tow mirrors, but we had the dealership put these on. These are OEM Ford. You know, like everything else, they slide out and slide in. And for years, I had the SIPA clip-on mirrors on my old F-150. And those worked fine. They were fine. But I tell you what, these things are 10 times an improvement over what um, the clip-on mirrors were. From a safety perspective, from a view perspective, I absolutely love them. So when we bought this vehicle, I chose to go with the 5-liter Coyote V8. And I know there's a lot of people out there that love the EcoBoost, and I'm one of them. I drove that EcoBoost, and that engine was absolutely spectacular. But as an engineer, I have my favorite statement that says, things seldom fail because they're too simple. And I just like the idea of a big, or relatively big, V8 uh, without the turbocharging and stuff. So this engine has done well. It has pulled up over the uh, mountains of New Mexico with no problem. We have a steep 8% grade here in Vermont that um, it tows the Airstream up. No problem whatsoever. It's not even huffing or puffing. We get about 12.4 miles per gallon towing and that's um we can get upwards of 18 ish or so when we're not towing but about 12.4 which is the important number when towing we'll look at my records we average around 225 miles between fill-ups so i guess if i had to do something uh different with this vehicle i would get the larger fuel tank this has the standard fuel tank that's about one of the few things that i would do differently is the larger fuel tank but um, this engine, it sounds great, and we and love it. where was it made? This engine was made in, or the truck was assembled at the Dearborn, Michigan truck plant. So hopefully someday we can go there and get a tour. Awesome. So one minor pet peeve with the F-150. As I said, it's a little beefier, but um, whenever we go towing, we always use our pre-departure checklist, which hangs from our neck like this. And item number three is to check the oil level in the truck. And I, I'm 5'10", so I'm not overly short or tall, but I cannot reach the dipstick like I could with the old Ford. So that requires the use of a little stool, and you gotta get up on it to check the oil, which I do every single time uh, before I tow. The other kind of goofy thing about the oil system in the uh, newer F-150s versus my uh, 2001 is that it takes 8.8 .8 quarts of oil to change the oil. My old F-150 took 
six quarts so it was easy you'd get one of these big guys and you'd get one of these well with 8.8 .8, if you have if you buy two of these you're going to be left over with a big huge container so i end up having to buy one five gallon or five quart container and then four smaller quarts which is more expensive it's uh, a little bit environmentally unfriendly but um, it's just kind of one of those irritating things. And you have to kind of estimate what's 8.8 .8 versus just 6 quarts. So it's a, a little minor annoyance um, with the V8. One thing that I like about the oil change system is the drain plug doesn't require any tools. Although it did require a little bit of a learning curve on the operator's part. So this uh, F-150 is equipped with a 10-speed transmission. And I, I think it's absolutely excellent. The, um, when it's towing on the highway just normally, the transmission temperature where it's got a gauge is about 194 degrees and it's consistent. Um, towing the RV, it weighs about 4,660 pounds. Towing the RV, the transmission temperature goes up to about 204 degrees and it just stays there. Steady Eddie at 204 degrees, practically no matter what we're doing. We went up the mountain of Fancy Gap, Virginia. And I think the temperature cre creeped up to about 210. Uh, but to me, for that normal flat space towing, going up only 8 degrees for transmission temperature, that is super. And it just stays there. This does have the uh, transmission oil cooler. I've heard a rumor that the 19s didn't. Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not. But this 2018 absolutely has the transmission cooler. One other thing that we love about the transmission is that we ordered it with the column shifter. Most of the F-150s, you'll note, have the uh, shifter on the console here. And to me, I've been driving a truck with the uh, shifter up top there forever. It seems natural to me. And this gives extra storage compartment, which I think is much more uh, useful than the shifter down here. So uh, that's the report on the transmission. I think it's excellent. Awesome. So a lot of people talk about transmissions and the technical aspects of buying a truck. I thought the most important thing was comfort. And when you're spending 187 hours in a vehicle, I think comfort is an important thing to consider. So I wanted to be able to drive this truck. It was important that these seats be able to adjust easily. And I think that was one of the reasons we chose an F-150. And it you know? also raises up. Yep. The pedals raise up. I can feel like I can see over steering wheel and the dash, which is very important to me because I'm on the shorter side. Right, and that's one of the most important considerations we had when buying a vehicle was that Cindy could drive it. Yes. I know everyone out there in the internet world is saying, I need an F650 with a Merlin V12 engine and an 11 foot bed and all this other stuff. But for our trailer, we don't need that. It was much more important that Cindy be able to drive it. Agreed, yes. And I felt like I could drive this. The only bad point was... How are we doing with butt issues? It was giving me butt issues. And if you see it in our previous video when we were buying the truck. All right, see, what's the major thing you've learned so far test driving? You never wear your hair up in a bun when you're test driving these things. It's driving me nuts. Oh, it's no That was a kind of a down issue with the adjustability of the headrest. So it just requires me to wear my hair definitely if I'm going to be driving. As I said, we go about 225 miles on a tank of gas before we fill up when we are towing. And one of the things that I love about this truck is this little capless fuel filter. You don't need to unscrew something or have, hang it up or have it hang down like that. You open it up, boom, nozzle goes in. Take the nozzle out, close your door, and you're ready to go. So I know a lot of people like tonneau covers, things like this. I always prefer the ARE uh, cap so that I can put stuff up over and above the level of the bed of the truck. When I bought a cap, I w had a couple of things that were mandatory. For me, the, what they call the wind doors so that I can, whoa, a little moisture there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand under that. Um, so that I can get things inside the truck uh, right from here. The downside, of course, is that people can see in a lot easier, but it does all of these things do make access a lot easier. Lock. The other thing, you come around to this side, is I made sure that we had one single opening for the rear. Some of them have it on this side. I like it on this side. 
So I'm not sure who to blame for this next thing that I'm not sure I like a whole lot, but that's the interior of the cap. And when I bought the cap, I told the dealer I wanted it exactly like my last one. And the last one was just open fiberglass like that. And you guys like, you're in luck. We have a free carpeting, free carpeting on your cap. And I'm like, I don't want carpeting. My old cap didn't have it, don't want it. And I was envisioning it get loose. And Mildewy well, or? Yeah, so I'm like, I don't want a cap. And so the last one that I bought in 2001 was all nicely finished on the inside, the fiberglass. And this one is completely rough. So you can tell, I, I worked in manufacturing. Somebody figured out that it was just cheaper to slap some carpet on than to finish the inside of the cap. And when I asked to delete the carpet, they just deleted it. So yep. And we've I, even sent in a, a question into the ARE people about how to finish the inside. And, and what they said to sand it. And like, thanks. Right. But I spend, uh, I continue to get fiberglass shards and needles and fiberglass uh, cuts uh, because of that. So I'm not sure if that's ARE's fault or my fault, but uh, that's one of the things I'm not a big fan of. Comment below if you have a solution for uh, the inside of your truck if you have not had carpet put in. Yep. And we did get the Ford. Uh, bed liner, plastic bed liner. Uh, it's kind of cheap and cheesy. Uh, that's something Ford probably didn't put a lot of quality into uh, versus my old one, which uh, was a little bit different, but yeah, such is good. So what do you think of the tailgate height? Uh, the you know, the whole truck seems bigger. Tailgate, of course, is nice and light, which is cool. Um, yep, I know the GMC, they have all that stuff, but this just seems higher. So we went with the uh, extended cab model versus say the crew cab model, primarily for two reasons. And one is to, I think the um, bed, it keeps the bed just a little bit longer without having to add another bed there. But more importantly, we have counted on the number of one hand, probably the number of times somebody actually sat in the back of our uh, tow vehicle when we had our 2001 for 17 years. And this is, these are really nice. They open up all the way. The other thing that was really a marked difference between the 01 and the 18 are these seats. And it'll be interesting to see how these things hold up. Um, they're comfortable, very comfortable for our long travels, but they're certainly not as soft and as plush as the uh, 2001. So we'll see how those uh, kind of hold up. All right, here's a special love sub and word of the day skewomorph and i just think this is cool a skewomorph is when you take modern technology and try and make it look like something old look at how cool it is when the numbers roll over here like the old uh analog uh odometers i just think this is pretty cool all right well there you have it there's our 10,000 mile towing review of our uh 2018 f-150 the love truck the love truck absolutely we're getting license plates next month for that but anyway, definitely, uh, if you liked our video, give us a big thumbs up, comment below, but only comment if you're not going to say I need an F650 with a Merlin V12 engine in it. I get that, but otherwise leave a good comment below about your experiences with an F150 and towing it. And subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And we come out with RV and Airstream related content and occasionally F150 content every Tuesday. Thanks for watching. See ya.